This place is a zoo. Welcome to the world-renowned Detroit Zoological Park, one of the world's most famous zoos, famous for its beauty and for its brains. The Detroit Zoo has a long tradition as a pioneer among American zoos. This pioneering spirit got its start way back in the 1880s. Around the time the J.L. Hudson Company was founded, the difference between zoos and circuses was not clear. Out west, Buffalo Bill was charging folks to come and see his Wild West show. Back east, P.T. Barnum bought a trained African elephant from the London Zoo that became part of Barnum's traveling circus. Wherever they went, huge crowds turned out to see Jumbo the elephant. At the same time in the Midwest, a much smaller traveling circus was making the rounds. But when they came to the end of their finances, the little circus also came to the end of their road. The townspeople at the end of that road couldn't bear to see the animals starve, so they took up a collection to care for them. The town was Detroit, and this was the beginning of the Detroit Zoo. With a name that was more dream than reality, the Detroit Zoological Garden opened in 1883. As the years moved on into the 1900s, the animals were moved to new quarters on Belle Isle. While Detroiters were drifting through summer afternoons, picnicking on the shores, bear dens and other exhibits were being constructed on Belle Isle. In the following years, not to be outdone by P.T. Barnum, the Belle Isle Zoo acquired its own elephant house, and Detroit schoolchildren collected pennies to buy a trained female elephant named Sheba. As Europe and the United States headed into World War I, some of Detroit's most influential leaders headed to the drawing board where they began to make plans to create a grand zoological park. This fledgling Detroit Zoological Society purchased 100 acres of farmland on Woodward Avenue, 10 miles north of the Detroit River. Their vision was to build a permanent sanctuary for wildlife where Detroiters could come and enjoy exotic animals. The goats, the horses, and the chickens on the farm were replaced with elephants, lions, and giraffes from the wild. The dream of the founders was to establish one of the most complete zoological gardens in America. They wanted a wildlife refuge that would be laid out as a natural park. From humble beginnings emerged one of the most influential pioneers in the transformation of American zoos, the Detroit Zoological Park. As the 20s roared, it was a time of fun, prosperity, and growth. Growth for the country, for the city, and for the Detroit Zoo. Plans were finalized for the primate house. The bird house, which is now the wildlife interpretive gallery, was under construction, and plans were also underway for the lion and tiger exhibits. As the young zoo neared completion, an enthusiastic community eagerly awaited opening day. There were a dozen permanent residents already, including elk and deer, and the bear dens housed six Michigan black bears. But even before opening day, two new arrivals at the zoo captured the attention of Detroiters. The Detroit Free Press splashed a story in the morning paper that a wolverine had been born at the zoo, the first captive birth of a wolverine anywhere in the world. And just as thrilling was the arrival of Paulina the elephant, a gentle giant who was to become one of the best known and most beloved of all zoo animals. She arrived amidst the pomp and circumstance that was customary of the day but she was soon put to work doing what elephants have done for centuries, serving man. Paulina became a valuable part of the construction of the new zoo, hauling heavy loads and going where construction equipment could not. 
just like Sheba at the Belle Isle Zoo and P.T. Barnum's Jumbo, Paulina the Elephant became a major attraction. Her colossal strength and gentle patience captured the hearts of a generation of children. On opening day in 1928, the zoo had some competition for attendance. The first all-talking movie was playing at the Fox Theatre downtown. The Tigers were playing a home game at Navin Field. And gas prices had risen to an all-time high, 20 cents a gallon. They wondered, would anyone come? The zoo hoped for a crowd of 10,000 people. 150,000 people showed up. The zoo was off and running. Even during the Depression, Detroiters and their zoo chugged along. For many people, the Depression hit them hard, and going to the zoo offered a few hours of escape. The parking lot was jammed every day. From the log cabin station, visitors could ride around the entire zoo on the miniature railroad. There were lions and tigers and bears, of course, but also a snake pit, a trout stream, and a guinea pig exhibit. It was a different time with different attitudes toward animals. A zoo visit in those days meant an elephant ride, to be sure, but the biggest attraction of all was the chimp show. <laughs> For 10 cents, you could watch trained chimpanzees dressed up in costumes, doing things that were even a challenge for humans. Hundreds of people crowded into the wooden bleachers for every show. 